Hi, Mark Gordon, 5 o'clock Pacific time on April the 5th, 2012 with the Gold, Silver, and Spider Report. This is the GLD, uh, the uh, Gold ETF, up about uh, 7 tenths of 1% today, a little bounce. Um, we had uh, been falling pretty precipitously in this channel here, and then uh, a couple weeks ago we broke out of that channel to the upside. I got stuck in this congestion here of these uh, moving averages that are sitting uh, overhead and then uh, uh, tested that and pulled back, rallied back up, didn't quite get up to this black line, the 200-day moving average, uh, falling short and now coming back down. Now what you'll notice here is that uh, this channel is now uh, flattening out, uh, which is uh, kind of a good sign here. Um, so we have uh, uh, basically uh, not too much of a lower low uh, uh, after uh, uh, taking out this 158.13 here that was set a couple of weeks ago. And now we're bouncing back up. Uh, let's see what can happen. Today's volume was kind of light. Uh, don't like that. Had a couple of days of heavy selling. Uh, but let's see if we can't get back up uh, to uh, this trend line here that is now uh, uh, shaped up. That would put us back at about the 161 range, 161, or at about where the 21-day and the 10-day moving averages are converging. That would be a pretty logical place to rally to if gold wants to rally up from here. Now one of the possibilities is that the GLD could be forming a base. Uh, this could be the start of a cup-shaped base. Uh, that would seem like a logical thing to have happen. Um, but let, time will tell. Uh, let's just try to get through uh, uh, the next uh, a week here and uh, get us a nice little rally back up. I'd love to see some really big volume like we had back here in January. You get a big uh, uh, up move like that and following through and that took us all the way to the 174 level. And of course uh, we had a big drop with big volume which is now uh, uh, taking us down and we're trying to fight back up from that. And when I scroll down to the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, you can see that it, it cleared it. the black line which is the shorter moving average got up above the uh, gray line which is the, the um, I'm sorry, the faster moving average got above the slower moving average and we've been kind of waffling back and forth, no real direction there. Uh, of course the um, relative strength against uh, stocks, the S&P 500 has been weak uh, gold has been uh, uh, underperforming uh, uh, stocks uh, ever since peaking in December here. Um, stochastics are uh, luckily coming down into the oversold area, so that's a good sign. Maybe the selling is, uh, is going to abate here. And flipping now to a weekly chart of the GLD, down 2.35% on the week. Uh, you can see uh, uh, this uh, down week here, uh, the rally up to the moving averages here, and the fall here, uh, one of the negatives that's happening is is this blue line, the 10-week moving average, is now uh, crossing over this black line, the 40-week moving average, and uh, could take out the 20-week uh, moving average too. So that's a negative sign. Uh, volume has been uh, fairly subdued. Uh, a couple of uh, spiky little uh, uh, down weeks here. Uh, not the best thing in the world to see. Uh, our next logical point of uh, support here uh, on the weekly chart would be this lower Bollinger Band at about the 152 level, uh, 152.45 to be exact. So that's a place uh, where where uh, so support could happen. And then of course we have this previous low at 148.27 that was uh, made uh, in late December. And to give you a broader perspective on gold, last year in 2011 uh, we fell in January and then rallied up Nice little rally here. Uh, then in March we had some sideways action. In April, like we're in now, we got a nice little pop here. And then uh, uh, starting in May, we just kind of waffled back and forth. And in July, we really took off. Uh, we had a, a, a first or second week in July here. We had a, a big volume uh, up week, uh, broad stroke here, and then followed through on that and went to new highs here uh, in the summertime before peaking out in September. And then, of course, uh, we have been waffling ever since. Uh, this year, uh, we had a good rally at the start of the year. Uh, took a little uh, three-week break here uh, going into February. And then had been falling here uh, through February and March and now into April. And um, uh, so, you know, the years never repeat themselves, but it's just good to keep a perspective of what's going on. You can see that we are just stuck in this back-and-forth trading range here. 
And moving on now to silver, this is the SLV, the silver ETF, down about, uh, I'm sorry, up 1.3% today. Get a little, a little bounce here up off the bottom. I can't help but noticing this sort of uh, cup uh, being formed also, like in the gold. Um, uh, you know, trying to hammer down below 30 bucks here and not, not getting much progress here. Um, we did uh, uh, get a little bit of uh, 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 an up move today, but the volume was light compared to the last couple of days, which saw heavy volume uh, uh, sell-offs here and taking out some, some uh, moving averages here. Here's the green line. Uh, this is your 100-day moving average, and that got taken out yesterday. And um, uh, also, uh, uh, you rallied up here, uh, tried to get up here to the 50-day moving average, this blue line, and uh, trying to get up there a couple times here. Uh, touched it here, uh, came back down, uh, got up almost to it here, came back down, and so forth. So uh, that's been some overhead resistance here. Traders uh, not w willing to really take it up through there at this point. Of course, I believe there's a lot of central bank intervention on silver, a lot of manipulation going on. Um, the uh, invisible hand, uh, as Jim Sinclair calls it, uh, does not want silver up above this blue line here at this point. Uh, but uh, anyways, our next uh, point of uh, overhead resistance will come in here at the 100-day moving average, 31.27. Uh, and then uh, let's see if we can get up through that. And then right above that, we got the 21-day moving average coming in at 31.60. And, uh, and then, of course, the 50-day uh, moving average, the one we've been having so much trouble with, coming in at, at about the 32.50 level, 32.50. And i uh, like to see, again, some big volume on an up move. And uh, taking out some of this moving, these moving average would be ideal. Of course, we are still below the key 200-day moving average, uh, sitting now at 33.55. And uh, looking here at a uh, weekly chart of the SLV, you can see these tight closes here. The last uh, three weeks have been tight. Maybe we can do that again and get up. If we got up above this green line here, the 20-week moving average, that would be ideal. And get four tight closes in, the, is in there. That would show that there's some support here for silver. I like the fact that we did not take out the 30-21 level here. Um, that that uh, is, uh, is we're holding above that. And um, that uh, you know we have this sort of rounding sort of bottom here. Uh, as if it's shaping a new base. I don't know, it's too early to tell. I've not seen a lot of real downside volume here the last four or five weeks, which is ideal also. So uh, right now, just kind of uh, uh, stuck in this trading range in, uh, here that we've been in for months. Uh, of course, we peaked out here last year, got to 48.35 uh, uh, here in May, and then had a big, big volume drop here, slicing down through the 10-week uh, uh, and getting uh, support here at the 20-week, three tight closes here, rally back up here, and then failed again, rally back up on a failure. So just waffling, trying to get some traction here. Uh, it seems like, well, it, almost, uh, we have been in a sideways pattern for almost a year here in the silver. And they say in trading, uh, uh, you know, these positions will either wear you out or scare you out, and I'm sure a lot of silver investors uh, that are trading the paper silver are getting very frustrated at this point. But uh, in my view, the uh, fundamentals for silver look excellent for the future. Uh, you know, we just uh, have to wait this out and uh, and wait for uh, wait for some traction to take hold here. And you'll you'll notice that when you get a a, a big uh, up week on some big volume, that'll be a sign that uh, that, that this might be turning the corner. Moving on now to stocks. This is the SPY, the S and P 500. Uh, certainly a lot better looking chart than the silver and gold. We have been in a nice rally since our follow through day on December 20th. And uh, uh, sitting right here on this key 21 day moving average, breached it once back here in March, no big deal. Uh, came down on some gaps, on some heavy volume, scaring everybody out. But uh, the buyers were there to uh, pick it up here at the lower Bollinger Band and ran it back up. And we are sort of caught in this little bit of a back and forth trading range here. We're at the lower end of that range. Volume has been average, a uh, little bit spiky here, a little spiky here, um, but uh, uh, you know, just holding our own here uh, at the 21-day moving average. Nice stack of the moving averages. Uh, this market here uh, obviously has a lot of momentum to the upside, although that momentum is starting to taper off, and I'll show you why I say that. If we look down here at the MACD, moving average convergence divergence, you'll notice that the faster line, the black line, has crossed under 
the uh, slower line. That's a sign uh, of, uh, of a loss of momentum. You'll notice that the slower uh, uh, average, uh, this blue line here, is starting to roll over and point down. Uh, and you'll notice that the black line is pointing down and moving farther away from the blue line. And uh, uh, you haven't seen that uh, since uh, early March here. Um, and back then, it uh, didn't do much here. It just kind of took us down uh, for a test of the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, that, uh, if we did that again, that would take us down here to uh, this 50-day uh, uh, moving average here, right where the Bollinger Band is here. So losing a little momentum here. Uh, stochastics moving down. The momentum, uh, slower term um, uh, 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 stochastics here are uh, showing a loss of momentum and pointing down. Uh, we still have farther to go here um, uh, before uh, getting into the oversold territory. So we could go a little lower on the moving averages here uh, on, on the, uh, the S&P 500. Um, IBD has now changed their view to market in a correction. Market in a correction. That's a pretty significant thing for IBD to say that. They study the real true leaders of the market and have, have come to the conclusion that there's just so much distribution going on, heavy institutional selling, that it's best to uh, you know, uh, go to the sidelines, look at your purchases, uh, where to take profits, uh, if you have them, uh, you know, study uh, your each individual stock, uh, see if there's weakness and take some money off the table, raise a little cash here, and uh, suspend any new buys until we get out of the woods here. Weekly chart of the SPY, as you see the big run we've had since uh, December. And down here, testing uh, the four-week moving average, no big deal. Uh, kind of waffling here <coughs> for the last month, not making much headway. Uh, did make a new high this week, but uh, as I say, uh, IBD's got us uh, market in a correction. Uh, you'll notice on uh, the weekly uh, chart here, the MACD is still very favorable here, uh, even though the black line is starting to flatten out here a bit. And you'll notice the rollover here of the stochastics losing a little momentum. Uh, they've been kind of flatlining here sideways, but way up here in the 90 range. So stochastics are still strong as far as the momentum indicator. And on balance volume, uh, basically they take the uh, amount of shares uh, uh, being bought versus the amount of shares being sold. Uh, and uh, get sort of a, uh, a plot of the uh, volume of, stock, of, uh, of uh, money moving in or out of stocks. That's still pretty positive, although waffling sideways here. And that's it. So uh, uh, stocks uh, uh, now in a correction according to IBD and of course gold and silver uh, in a very choppy trading range for quite a while. So that's it. Thanks for listening.